Hey y'all, it's me, Niecy Lynn. This is December 20th, which means this is Vlogmas 20. I thought today we would make a pumpkin roll and um, I've been telling y'all we do this and y'all find out just what a messy cook I am when this goes on because I am absolutely a mess. The biggest mess of all time when I cook. I make a big mess everywhere, so get ready. This recipe is so old. It came from Becky Quinn that I used to work with at the doctor's office when Keely was a baby. That's how long I've had this recipe and how long I've been making these things. And some years I make them, some years I don't, but they get made at least every couple of years and usually several years in a row. They're, they look hard, they're super easy. I've already made one and it's outside cooling. I'm hoping that it will be cool by the time we're ready to ice one. I don't know if it will or not. If not, we may have to try to do a little splicing. I will also try to remember to put the whole recipe written out in the description today, which y'all know I'm horrible about doing that, but I'm going to try to do better today. So the very first thing you need is three eggs and a cup of sugar. And like I said, y'all, when I say to y'all, I'm messy. I'm not even joking. I'm like, it's all over me. I'm just a big mess. So here we have three eggs here. And I only had one good egg left. The others are store eggs and you know, they're not as good. Come back here. And they're trying to roll away. And then sugar. <clears throat> so we need our cupcake. And I use this for the baking mix. Like I said, it's super duper easy. Messy Marvin. When I cook so. Here we have a cup of sugar right there. And then we're going to crack our eggs. One. And I'm telling you, when you buy them at the store, they never want to crack right. It's just disgusting. I hate store eggs. But I haven't seen my could get any, so. Because we've been under quarantine, but we just got the results. James Williams is in the clear. Corona test negative, thank you, Jesus. Also, if when you're cracking eggs, which this didn't happen to me this time, but if you get a little piece down in there, if you'll use a piece of the shell, you know if you try to grab it with a fork or a spoon, it just kind of runs away from it for some reason. If you use a piece of the shell, you can just grab it up out of there really easy. I don't know why it doesn't repel it like the, um, like anything else does. I've never found anything else that works. So we've got our one cup of sugar and we got three eggs. We're dumping our three eggs in here, right here. And we're gonna put this little thing on right over here. And this is already dirty because I already made the one, remember? So making two back to back are we fast in here now we are and where are we here all right lock lock and load like I said I have it it's on my arm I'm the world's messiest cook that's okay as long as you get it cooked I don't guess it really matters then we need two thirds a cup of pumpkin. So I already opened this to make um, the first one that's outside cooling. We've got it outside on a little end table. Hopefully cooling very quickly. Sorry, does it, I may have to stick it in the refrigerator. There's one third. And I'll just scoop it out with a little tiny spatula. It's not even a spoonula, it's a spatula. 
but it does its job. So there is our two third a cup of pumpkin. Now, with this that's left, you can put it in a smoothie or anything. Um, you know, you can also trade it out for butter and eggs and other things. Pumpkin is great stuff. So if you're trying to, um, if you need a baking substitution or if you're trying to be a little bit healthier, you can trade out pumpkin for several things. If you look that up, it's a good substitution for all kind of fun stuff. Golly, I'm so messy. So we're gonna match creaming together back here. pumpkin. And baby said she's feeling better. She thinks she doesn't have any symptoms of the COVID anymore. So we're doing all the good around here. All the good. Oh my gosh, I forgot to put this phone on, shut up. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's probably gonna ring and cut it off, but James Williams is here, maybe we can help me slice it. Lord, I did not put it on, shut up. Put my macro here, now I'm so strapped in We need Pioneer Banking Mix. I've never used anything but Pioneer to make this. It says Pioneer, I get Pioneer. Um, I don't know if you have another baking mix or if you use another baking mix or whatever. All I know to say is that's on you. I don't know. I always use the Pioneer. It says Pioneer and that's what I've always used for everything. I don't really use this quick much. There's a quarter. When we do the rolling and stuff, I'll move and turn over here and we'll, I'll try to change the camera so y'all can, I'll roll it down so y'all can see. So three quarters of a cup. So now you're just getting your dry ingredients together to add to this in a minute. I'm going to turn that off for a second. And we need now our spices. So we need cinnamon. Pumpkin pie spice, nutmeg, and I just leave mine all together and I just throw the whole things in the dishwasher. I mean, I just drop it in the dishwasher. It's just, I'm not going to spend my life trying to separate things out. So, two teaspoons of cinnamon. friends y'all that bake by weight I don't know what to tell you you're gonna have to figure it out because I don't know how to do that I got a skills um because I've been watching you know I watch the British baking show and I got a set of skills but I ain't been really brave enough to try them but once and half a teaspoon of nutmeg So here are our three quarters of a cup of Pioneer baking mix, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and no, sorry, one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, half a teaspoon of nutmeg. If you stumped your toe on that, I'm sure it wouldn't be the end of the end, but you know, whatever. I like spicy things, but everybody does it. Now 
while that little thing is doing its thing there, we're gonna chop up a cup of pecans. And they are pecans, they are not pecans. I'm gonna tell y'all about that. After you use the ingredients out of this and it's empty, this is a pecan. Nuts are not pecans. They're pecans. Pecans. And there's just a little bit more in here, so we're going to just dump them on out and, you know, probably eat a couple. Because, you know, it's a pecan. Good stuff. And we're just rough chopping them here. I have left them off. It's fine to leave them off if you don't like them. If you forget to put them on when you're baking, you can put them in the uh, fill-in, you know, and that's fine. Now you got the con. It's probably going to be in my teeth. When y'all are talking, I'm talking to y'all. You're going to be like, my God, girl. Sister, get that off there. I love a little Santoku knife, however you say that. Santoku, Santoku. James Williams likes the big one, but the big one don't work good for me. It's too big. A cup of chopped pecans. We're going to scrape down the sides and see if we give this one more little mix up in here. Sit right there. Okay, that's getting its last few stirs on there. Now we can put the boots on these things because we don't need them anymore. here in the pantry. I did get it cleaned up a little bit today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Which was super nice. So this was a wreck. Probably good. Okay. Now, one of the weirdest things, parts of this, and not this though. We were talking about Mexican vanilla there's nothing better than Mexican vanilla. This one is D-A-N-N-C-Y, Dancy. And this one is St. Louis Ray. So good. If you ever go Mexican vanilla, you will never go back. It is excellent. Okay. Just a regular cookie sheet. You do have to spray it, however. When I spray my cookie sheet, I spray it on my door to my, which is right down here, the door to my dishwasher. Anytime I have to spray anything, I just set it on there. That way it's not on my floor or my countertops. I mean, let's be honest, the inside of the dishwasher is going to get washed anyway, right? But I'm going to set it back in here for that. So we have our cookie sheet, and I prefer to use a metal one. My small metal one um, has got really, just got really old and I threw it away when I moved and I just realized I had not replaced it. So I'm using my stoneware one, which does bake good, but is heavy. So you have your cookie sheet, you spray your cookie sheet, and of course your nose itches because you're cooking. 
Then you have to take wax paper and put on here. So, picky sheet, spray, wax paper. And you will need to trim off a little bit. If you leave a whole ton on here, um, it will start to get smoky and yucky. Trust me, I know. I really, really know. And I clip little pieces off, you don't have to. So I don't like it smoking up in the oven. Spray. Wax paper. Spray again. You can butter it. You can, you know, whatever blows your skirt up, man. I'm all about making my life easy, so I spray. Cookie sheet. Spray. Wax paper. Spray. I'm going to say that again and again because it seems odd, but it is necessary. giblets back there okay so in here we have and I'm this person that checks myself 90,000 times and still wants to sneeze three eggs a cup of sugar two-thirds a cup of pumpkin three-quarters a cup of pioneer baking mix two teaspoons of cinnamon one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice a half a teaspoon of nutmeg okay that's what's in here it's all nice and stirred up with all the things on it. All the sprays and the wax papers and sprays again. And all those things. I said, I have no clue where this recipe initially came from. I got it from Becky Quinn. I'm gonna guess maybe it came from a Pioneer Baking Mix contest, but I don't know. So here's all your stuff. And we're gonna do a little spread out on here. And if you're like me, you realize that you turned the oven off a few minutes ago. It hasn't been off very long, so it shouldn't take long to heat back up. So 325 is what you want your oven warm to. And you're just gonna try to level this out on here. It's not going to be the end of the world. If it's not, you're going to roll it up. And I always cut off the ends before I take mine anywhere because, you know, the end part doesn't show off all your beautiful hard work so good. So I always cut off my end pieces and they're just left here for whoever wants to eat them. Which usually means me. Or James Lee. But he's been really good since he got back from the hospital not eating a bunch of sugar. So. stuff on there. Now we're going to take all our little pecans and sprinkle them on as the girls say. You got to sprinkle these on here.
usually dump it on there. I don't like the little bottom bits to get on there because that's usually what has the little bitters in it. If you happen to miss any shell or whatever, leave even those little jibbly bits in the bottom. And those little jibbly bitter bits are awful. little jibbly bits usually just get dumped. Just like that. Because I do not want to be tasting that little ugly bitter bottom part. It's so gross. It tastes terrible. Okay, let's get some water in this pan over here. And wash it out real quick and get the I'll need it to mix up the frosting, filling, whatever you want to call it. you can recycle wax paper. I always throw my wax paper in there if it doesn't have greasy, gross stuff on it. I hope that's right. I hope I'm not the person messing up recycling for everybody. That would be bad, bad, bad. Okay. So that thing is about ready to go. I have two of these out because I'm going to have to do the other one because I've got two out cooling so you don't need twice this but I do for later on. Okay. Now the oven is just about to get hot and I have got such a mess right here which is what I always do. I am a mess maker. I need this for powdered sugar. And we get our cream cheese over there, our butter over there, and our vanilla over there. So that's all we need over there. So the rest of this can just be dirty. And we'll run the dishwasher in a few minutes when we're done. But my countertop is covered in a hot mess here because that's how I do. Oh, but I promise y'all I will show um, Santa Claus up there. I didn't decorate up there just a whole lot in my winter. You can see where my winter thing will post. Man, what, my winter ABCs will go up there on the long thing, but one of y'all had wanted to see the big Santa face up there. And there he is. I've been having him like a super long time. Um, I got him at Kirsty's at the Briar Patch in Wattachee many years ago. And that's just some of the little things. Normally I would have a lot of my Jim Shore Santas and stuff up there too, but this year sitting here by myself, not knowing if we were gonna get to have anybody over, I just said, yeah, well. And they can throw some out. They were up on the top shelf and I couldn't reach them. So. but you can make biscuits with this <clears throat> like impossible pie with it um all kinds of things pancakes and waffles but i did get this cleaned out today and i am so happy that i got the pantry cleaned out let's see well oh, that's it has a few more minutes i think i can swing all around there possibly so I can pick y'all up like this. Okay. 
So I did get it straightened up in there some. It was like looking like a hot catastrophe today. So trash recycle and all the things. Hey, there's our oven. Yay. Okay. So we're going to put our cooking roll. Here it is in the oven. For about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll check it after 15. So let's go here, here. 15. Okay, so we're rolling on 15 now. 15 minutes. And we don't need our big sugar, as the girl says. We don't need our big sugar anymore. We can get it out of the way. One thing down. Okay. And we're not to this yet, but this is what I roll mine up in. The other one is out there. I rolled up in the other thing. It's just an old pillowcase. They're all stained up and horrible because that's what I've used these for for years and years and years is to roll up my pumpkin rolls in. So that's what I use. You can use a tea towel or, an, um, you know, the really old diapers that don't have any fuzz left on them anymore. Um, I've used those before, like they're ancient tea towel, anything like that. You just have to be able to roll it up really good. Okay, that thing's going. Let's rinse out this pan here, wash it out a little bit. Here's some soap. I'm over here, I don't know if y'all can see me. I don't know if I turn this, y'all can see me over here or not. Probably not, maybe a little bit, I don't know. Can y'all see me a little bit? I'm just going to wash out the mixing bowl. Gone. And the little spatula thingy thing. It didn't come with my mixer. I ordered it afterwards. But it really works good. A little spatula sturdy whiskey thing. spoonula. Well, spatula actually. That one isn't a spoonula. And our little spatula whisker thing. Like I said, it didn't come with my uh, KitchenAid, but I really liked it. It works really, really good. And the bowl. And that guy's in there just a baking away. down here in the drawer. Okay, now we will start on our um, 
filling here. So we're gonna need eight ounces of cream cheese. I've been sitting out here trying to get to room temperature. It's pretty close. Eight ounces of cream cheese in there. So I'll minus a little bit. I'm gonna drop a little dab. And then we need six tablespoons of butter. No, this is not a healthy recipe. Then let's go ahead and mix these two up and then we'll put in our powdered sugar. So our pumpkin roll is in the oven. We've got our eight ounces of cream cheese and six tablespoons of butter in there with the whiskey attachment thing and slow it out. powdered sugar and some vanilla. So here's our Mexican vanilla. It smells so good. It um actually it's just stronger. It's supposed to be a teaspoon. I think it's a stronger um, better vanilla. Let's see if I can let's see how big a mess I can make in front of y'all. There's half a cup in our vanilla in. Break down the sides a little bit. And we need another half cup. So, here's my another half cup. Okay, that's in there stirring. 
we've got, we've been in about 10 minutes over there. I'm gonna run out and see how cool this other crank and roll is. I'll be right back. Help him along his way. Get him going. Just cream cheese frosting. You can put this cream cheese frosting on cupcakes, cakes, anything. It is so good. I'm going to set it right over here because I'll need to make another batch for the other. Um, Just a second. Well, in just a little bit. So this guy here is ready. So there we have. That is eight ounces of cream cheese, six tablespoons of butter, a cup of powdered sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. So, that is ready for whenever that thing is cool. And this is here in the oven, and I don't know, I don't know if y'all can see if I turn y'all to the oven or not. Hey, y'all might can. Okay, let me get these guys off here. There he is in there. He's not done yet, but that's what he'll look like when he's in there cooking on that. He's still got about two minutes and then it wasn't ready earlier when I got to that point. It was still a little bit, um, was still a little bit undone. So I think I left it for four more minutes last time. Now, whatever you want to, you can go ahead and put it on what you want to serve it on. You can also just put it on wax paper and then finish filling it, roll it up really tight and then roll it again in aluminum foil after it's filled and everything and put it in the refrigerator. You can even put it in the freezer, but you can put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days and then just set it back out. Man, that is making a shadow on my face. Um, and then to just let it get room temperature before you go, you know, on your way to wherever, and it's fine. So you can make this several days ahead, put it in the fridge, and it's fine. A lot of people like them better that way because they get like super moist because the cake takes on a little bit of that moisture wetness out of the frosting. So it becomes like the whole thing becomes super moist and dense. Um, I prefer mine not in the fridge, but I don't know why. It's just me that's just me let's see if we're any cooler yet i'm just going to start screaming if i'm not fast 
Uh, not quite. I think we can still wait a few more minutes. Let's just for just a little bit, not as long as we can. This guy here is still cooking, and then we'll need to see him being flipped out. Because that's a thing. Flipping this thing out is quite the thing. So we can go ahead and be prepping for that. And so this is for my next batch of, to fill the next one, so. Let's see. And then if it just kind of bounces back, because that one's not quite done yet. See, it's stuck to my finger, so not quite done. See, so it's five more minutes. And I bet it'll be fine. This is so super messy to do. This part of it is going to get everywhere when you do it. Get ready. So you have your, whatever you're using. Like I said, I use these old, really, really old pillowcases. I've been using the same two pillowcases for this forever. And you're gonna take and just sprinkle powdered sugar on here about the, about the same size as you're gonna need to flip your cookie sheet over on and just spread because that's what keeps it from kind of sticking and it also makes a really pretty like nearly snowy looking thing on there like a little crusty snowy looking crusty thing it's really pretty like i said it is messy and it's a lot easier if you don't have the heavy cookie sheet right now i only have the heavy cookie sheet so We're ready to flip right there whenever it comes out. We are gonna be, we're ready to go. Can y'all see it back there? So we have our pillowcase, tea towel, whatever you wanna use, but we have spread powdered sugar all over it about the size that the cookie sheet will be when we flip it out, okay? You can, I'm gonna run something up under this one because it will be really heavy and that will make it a little easier to flip it for me like I said, we can all see how messy I get anyway I don't need any help getting messy -er by dropping a stoneware kick sheet making a big old stinking mess My gosh, one time when the kids were little, we made, um, I don't know, we call it snow. Where you take like popcorn and then you just pop your popcorn, just dry plain popcorn, and then you coat it with like white chocolate baking chip things, the candy coating, white chocolate candy coating. You melt it and dump the popcorn in and you stir it all around in there and it gets real fluffy looking like snow. And I had made that and it was in a white, white plastic bowl and I had put some in different containers to take people's houses and then there was some left in the bowl. And I don't remember if James or the kids or who, somebody had been, had eaten some of it, had been eating on what was left on the big bowl. and. For whatever reason, there was still some of it left. And I guess because the bowl didn't have a lid or whatever, it got stuck in the oven. Just they ate what they wanted and then set the bowl in the oven late at night. I guess, must have been James, I guess. And I got up to cook the next day, turned the oven on to preheat, and holy moly before long the house smoke was like rolling out of the oven i was like oh my god what's happening 
open up the door and there was that thing and it had melted and just ran down between the grates the bowl and it was taking the popcorn with it it looked like some really freaky modern art display it was horrible I thought, oh my god what am i gonna do so i just grabbed the racks out carried them outside turned the oven off let it get cool it just scraped it just popped right up off the oven bottom just like that after it got cool i was able to just pop it off and the same thing on the grates it was crazy it was the easiest thing to clean up i've ever had it was nuts of course you know your oven grates if you set them outside and spray them with easy off like that and then just let them set and then hose them off with your hose and then you can wash them off with your sponge to be sure there's nothing else on there but um to me that's the easiest way to clean your oven grates i'm sure you can probably spray that on there and then set them in the dishwasher or something i don't know i've never done that but i do set mine outside sometimes okay we're going in This is heavy, so I'm not gonna use my rag like I do a lot of times. So here we go. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, let's set it right there for a minute while I shut the oven door. Turn that thing on. Just be sure it kind of bounces back when you touch it. Yeah, it's bouncing back. Okay, now, like I said, it is so heavy because it is this big heavy pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take let's take this and slide it under there because it weighs way less. But do not kid yourself that thing is boiling hot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. And then we're just gonna take it Oh my gosh, it's so hot on my hand. And flip it over. And as you can see, powdered sugar shot out everywhere when you do that. If you know of another way to do this, I thought of sprinkling the powdered sugar on there and then trying to flip it. You know, then you wouldn't have to flip it as much. But I have never been brave enough to actually see if it would work. So put that down in there, that heavy pot pan. In here, so I don't guess it really matters since it's just me. But and it is so greasy because you sprayed and sprayed and sprayed and sprayed. Now we have to take off our wax paper, okay? So here we're just going to straighten it out really good. And this is where you need to just be a little bit patient and take your time, spread it out. So you just want to make sure your wax paper is really straightened. And then just start peeling. Watch right here and here or on the edges that you don't get caught. Because if you do, it'll break, it'll tear some of the edge off, okay? So right there, it wanted to tear a little bit because I've got a little bit, I had a little bit of a fold that I didn't get smoothed out just right. Okay, so there we go. We've taken this paper off. Our wax paper is off of here. We're laying in the tri in the rectangle of our powdered sugar, right? Now we're just gonna roll tight. So we're gonna start right here and we're gonna roll it as tight as we can. Can y'all see that? All right. Now, we are all rolled up inside here, the whole thing. I don't know if I can make it where y'all can see it or not. Um, nope. Can you see it from this end a little bit? Not really. But we're just rolled up inside there. And now you just need it to cool. You just need it to set it somewhere to cool off. Let it do its thing. I'll take mine and set it outside on that little, um, I'm gonna set it outside on this little grid table. I'll be right back. Okay. Count them moving out there. 
let's see if this one's cool enough that I think we can soldier on with it. Let's see. Let's dry this up where it was sweating. That's how hot that is. I mean, it sweated that just instantly. And you've got little bits of like wax on there, but it'll come off. Just don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now, let's see if we're kind of warm in the center. Yeah. Oh, but we're breaking, but that's okay. All right, see? Yeah, but we're so, this, I mean, it's like so moist. But as long as your end doesn't break, you're fine, okay? So can y'all see here, I've peeled that end back like this. We do have a tear here, but that's fine because it's way back. So we're going to take our tear to start our filling. And just open it up and start piecing it in there. like stay unrolled so the faster you roll it back up the better off you are if you get too much it's gonna bust it all to pieces you don't want that either so so I'm just gonna squeeze down as you roll it it's gonna push it toward the ends so you can get pretty close to the end can y'all see that on there really wet um, kind of a thing. It's real gooey and wet and just messy. It's like super messy. Super messy. Maybe that's why I like making it. It's messy so I don't have to feel bad about being messy. So I'm just piling it on. That it's going to be underneath. No one will ever know. Okay, we're going to do another roll. We hope it's all the way underneath. Sometimes I have a crack showing. Sometimes I don't. Okay. Now. Let me wipe my hands off. I'm trying to bring y'all over here to see this a little better. Grab y'all like this and bring you over here. Okay. So you can see all our little rolls and rolls and rolls there. And normally I would leave this. And if I'm taking it somewhere, I will leave it like this until I'm ready to display it. I won't cut off this end piece until I'm ready to go. But let's see here. Let's see if we got a pretty roll out of this. Come on now. I don't want to smash you. I should have got my serrated knife, y'all, sorry. But I don't want to smash it all to pieces. And I nearly did. Well, you can see when it's cooled off and it's not smashing, when it's completely cool, you'll be able to see that it's got the round round in there. And if you don't use the wrong knife to cut it with. So if at this point you want to put it up, let's get a piece of wax paper. Put a little extra powdered sugar on there to help keep it from 
It shouldn't stick to the wax paper anyway, but this will give us just a little added security on here. Okay, so here is our seam at the bottom. You can go straight in the fridge at this point and it's ready to take wherever you want to take it. Now, you will have a little filling left sometimes. A lot of times I'll put it in a little sandwich bag and then put it in the refrigerator and when I take my pumpkin roll out to go to room temperature before we're going somewhere, I will take out my little bag with a little bit of frosting in it and snip off the corner of it and just make a little swirly design or something on there to use up the rest of my frosting. So, y'all, I think that is it. We have made a pumpkin roll from the beginning to the very end in less than an hour with no editing. So, that'll let you know that even with me talking and blabbing on that you can make your pumpkin roll in about an hour. I mean, you have to let it cool so you have cool time in there, but I took my first one out and let it start cooling right before I started filming my second one. So you can, if you have two family dinners to go to, you can have you two pumpkin rolls because I could mix up my frosting in this next one right here. And as soon as that one gets cool, frost it. We've had one bowl, we've got a cookie sheet, that little cutting board that I use to slide under it, um, a cutting board for the pecans, and then just forks, knives, spoons, measuring spoons, and cups like that. So um, you can show up with something pretty fancy looking and less than an hour, in about an hour. So I hope y'all have a good evening. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, holler, and I will get this posted with the recipe. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.